Hello, guys and girls. Welcome back to the 1970s under the dome. Welcome back to Encased and playing hardball. Let us continue. On our journey into the unknown. So our character, yeah, let's recall, we are a child prodigy. We are super intelligent. However, due to the fact that we went to university, or well, actually we graduated from university at the age of 11, we we lacked kind of a childhood and a youth, basically, because after that we were working uh, yeah, as a pet, you could say, a pet project for certain professors uh, in in certain projects, yeah, and it was all great in the 1960s and 70s, but that did not uh, go well with our personal development. Um, and because of that, yeah, we started to, well, it, it, as it's the 70s, we started to take drugs and uh, were frustrated with the ladies, yeah. We're not charming enough to be romantically successful at this point. Um, and then we started, we, we thought, well, maybe it is because we, we lack the money, yeah. We never were very interested in the money. Um, rather in improving ourselves, thinking that that would be the most important thing for a lady. Yeah. But uh, apparently not. So and now we think that, or we thought that maybe it was about the money, which led us to cut some corners. Um, I mean, and sometimes we did even pickpocketing, yeah. It's not like we, we are like these spoiled little uh, rich girls who do shoplifting for this uh, thrill. But there is a thrill involved for us as well, right? That's the big thing. Yeah. And that led us to becoming a white collar criminal, basically. So we really cut some corners with the with uh, research budgets and stuff and well our professors found out but well before they they were of course pretty disappointed with us and threw us out of some projects uh, which yeah which uh, we we are really uh, ashamed to talk about that but uh, that really led us to uh, get some really bad contacts there yeah especially in this field here the criminal field um where we also learned to shoot it wasn't just some army training but someone showed us how to shoot with the tommy gun yeah but then things got even worse because not only the law enforcement was on our heels but also some of these criminals maybe and uh, we decided well it is time to get out of there and the dome was just the right project for us, right? We got, we applied and, uh, well, hopefully no one will follow us into the dome here. That's the situation. So, and now we have arrived. We are registered. We helped some people at the core. We are, of course, a very good person, just a bit frustrated and maybe under bad influence lately. But here we thought, well, we can have a new beginning in here. And, um, yeah, we just put on our clothing. For scientists and now we are moving on so right, let's actually let's go here first so there is some oh yeah there's something here there's a toolbox is there something oh a wrench that could become or that could prove useful there's a stack of equipment and a container over there Fiber optic cable, that sounds useful. Matches and polymetallic ore. Ooh, and that is even quite valuable. That's nice. That earns us even 25 experience points. 
Oh, and we find a shovel. Excellent. Excellent. That is good. Well, and then that, now that we are here, let's have a look outside at gate 3. Let us uh, look into the sun. And what's going on here? Nothing much. There are metal boxes down there. Okay, can we actually get out of here? Possibly. Right? Possibly. Okay, well. Hey, Danila Radimov. Oh, good day. On the edge of the unfinished platform stands a blue wearing a casually unzipped uniform jacket. Do you barter anything or you do have money and a bolt? That uh, is interesting for us. So He's holding a caress in his outstretched hand and softly mumble, mumbled something into the embedded microphone. Uneven tension applied to the coating of the landing pad will lead to a subsidence in the future and increasing stress on the elevator structure which is already near its limits. The engineer notices us. End of recording. He offers his hand cordially but without a smile. Danila Radimov saw you landing this morning. You settling in all right? How do you like the dome? Well, what are you doing here? Out here. Radimov sweeps a hand across the horizon. Oh, there, see? No, you can't see it. Let me explain. The administration wants to add a third terminal. I'm trying to convince them this is a bad idea. He puts the carers in his pocket. I'll finish up my calculations in a couple of days and bring the papers to their desk. Give them something to think about. Well, that sounds a bit negative. What's your opinion on the dome? Danila looks upwards at a shaky white glare hanging among the clouds. What do you think? My opinion is that this discovery is more important than going into space. Give humanity ten years and you simply won't be able to recognize the planet. That is, of course, if somebody doesn't hoard a few million for the platform renovation. The blue looks down at the unfinished balcony and shakes his head in discontent. Okay. And, well, what do you think... Uh, what kind of changes are waiting Concord in the future here? What's what will in which way will things develop? Now this, mind you, is a competent question, just for my specialty. For starters, evaluate the scale of operations. Here, look from that hill to uh, that roadway over there. The engineer circles the space with a gesture and looks at us, satisfied. After savoring the effect, uh, after, sorry, <laughs> after savoring the effect, he continues. Everything will be rebuilt. There, there will be warehouses, laboratories. The first level of Concord will finally be unoccupied. It's going to be the largest storage terminal under the dome. Nice okay. Well, that does sound, actually, that sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, sounds interesting. Um... And then that, I guess that will be some kind of old town. Yeah. For people, like the cheap housing and more the administrative uh, aspect. So, I really like this here with the, with the light and the shadows. That's kind of really cool. So, I'm glad we found a shovel. That can only come in handy, right? There's another metal box here. Let's ignore this here. Ah, the, those are the guys from the elevator. Oh, and we found a carpentry hammer and another wrench. And air gun power lids. Okay, that's good. Quick saving, but let's go over here now. That's actually excellent because the, uh, the this carpentry hammer, this handy tool, is more dangerous than it looks. Heavy and balanced enough to deliver a painful blow, yet very compact. As a bonus, it can also hammer nails and pull them out again. Tech plus five. There. An ordinary spade. Yeah, that actually I think we are pretty lucky already. Kind of. 
of this stuff. Oh yeah, by the way, did we read the pamphlet? No, we didn't. The dome is your new home. Welcome under the dome. This is your new home now and for the foreseeable future. So, what is it like? Technically speaking, the dome is an invisible, semi-permeable barrier, most likely a force field of unknown nature. The dome covers a large part of the desert, completely isolating the area within from the outside world. Our scientists believe this allowed the structures, objects and relics of the forefathers, the name we are, we've given the mysterious civilization that created the dome, to remain so well preserved. And we are here to explore all this. By the way, if you think the desert consists of nothing but sand, you are mistaken. There are extensive salt marshes and deep swamps, rich oases and rocky ridges under the dome. Let's look at what's located. Where? Geographically, we separate the desert into four sectors, north, south, east and west. The most populated sectors are the east and north. That's where you'll find most of our large-scale construction, excavations and new highways being laid. The west of the dome is where one finds the salt marshes and white sands hiding many of the forefathers' underground complexes. The south is a desert in the common meaning of the word. The main solar batteries that power our systems are installed there. Wherever civilization has gained a foothold, one can find its faithful companions, infrastructure and household comfort. Here at Kronos, we believe a happy employee is a productive employee. An obligatory prerequisite for happiness is the material abundance available to everyone in exchange for money. You can be sure there's no corner under the dome within the habitable zone, of course, where you won't be able to gas up your car, buy high-quality vacuum-packed and thermally insulated goods, read their day's newspapers with a cup of coffee, or review the movie industry's newest novelty. In addition, all medical, fire and repair services are provided to our loyal residents. Corporate and municipal laws and rules are upheld by our Black Wing Security Service. In case of vehicular breakdown, you can always call for a tow truck and a taxi of varying comfort levels. We also promptly deliver your mail and postal orders from the outside world. Phone numbers for emergency services and the contact information of reception managers for all wings are available on the last page. Once again, welcome under the dome, your new home. Okay, so, oh, and we, oh yeah, that is, that was, uh, that was enlightening apparently. Oh, oh, guys, I think we have a, to speak of role playing. I think we have a bug. Or did we already uh, listen to them? Katarzyna? I'm not sure because I don't recall, but uh, usually there are two people here. No, I think we listened to them, right? Katarzyna and this other guy. And we, uh, well, we listened in to them a little bit and they. Oh, we found out that there is actually some corruption going on here and uh, the people they are labeling the artifacts uh, in a wrong way. So the Katarzyna girl or lady seemed to be uh, the honest sort. She wanted to do it correctly and the guy uh, basically told her to uh, identify the the artifacts um, in a higher tier or something. So they could sell them for more money. Yeah. So. Or was it? Yeah, I think that was here. Yeah, right. So, oh yeah, here in two. That's where we are supposed to go. There's an irresistible trash bin though. Well, a handful of earth. That could come in handy at some point. Who knows? Hello, Margarita Chaken... Kachenko. The smell of good tobacco wafts off this tall, portly woman from a meter away. A black lacquered pipe, an open logbook full of signatures, and a metal flip calendar sit on the counter in front of her. A small nameplate reads Margarita Takachenko. Takachenko fixes her coppery hair with one hand and casually lights her pipe. To what do I owe the pleasure? Her voice oh, nice hair color. Gravelly. Her voice is deep and gravelly. Uh, well, 
I'm here for my personal weapon. Margarita thumbs back a couple of pages in her logbook. I see. This was your first receipt. Yes, it is, ma'am. She glances at her Kairos, looks at you, snorts, and retreats to the shelves. Why did she just snort? Is that because of our weasel on our chin? Tukachenko returns in a few minutes holding a large gun. You like big toys? Oh, yes, I do, ma'am. She presents the weapon in her outstretched hands. Take this and sign here. There are more fun things in store, but they're not for everyone. You see? Yes, I do. Well, you know, I always pictured myself riding a mech and shooting really big guns. After racking the slide, Tukachenko points the gun at the ceiling. High firing rate and good accuracy, even in burst fire mode. Enjoy. Just don't point it at me. The black no, of course not. Weapon. Thank you, ma'am. Um, yeah, we take the, the weapon uh, and point the barrel carefully aimed downward like we were trained, right? So we want to do right. Margarita drags on her pipe and releases a puff of thick yellow smoke. I see you know the rules and won't cause problems. No problems, ma'am. So, what kind of drawbacks do this weapon has? Uh, have? pushes a plug of tobacco around the bowl of her pipe. The safety's on the other side of the world. It's awkward to shoot from around a corner. Also doesn't shoot too well from the left shoulder. Other than that, it's a decent machine gun. Okay, thanks. Well, fortunately, I'm shooting from the right shoulder, being a right-hander. Although, like, I'm also basically, um, you know, I, I can use both hands pretty nicely. I'm actually good at uh, quite a lot of things. Oh, you, you are not interested in that. Okay, well, sorry. So, and how about servicing the weapon? The black points at a poster on the wall behind her. Can you see what's written there? Clean and oil. I have nothing to add. Uh, okay. The shrugs, puffing indifferently on her pipe. It's the least I could do. We have a requisition list from the Silvers. For free, you receive only rubbish. If you want the real deal, check out the weaponry shop. Or me. Okay, that's good to know that there is, uh, well, that there's different equipment, different quality levels. Wait a minute. Sign your name here in the meantime. Margarita ah. reaches under her counter and produces a set of ammunition. A new set of ammo is issued for every task, but there's so much bureaucracy you'll Attention. go daft. Attention. Expenditure Please report. Form number 16. Disposal form. I hate pa paperwork. Form. So if you need more ammo, I recommend you either search or barter for it. Or learn how to craft it on your own. These are useful skills. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for the advice. Leaning over the counter, the black points somewhere off to one side. <clears throat> now it's time for your training. Father B is already waiting for you by the big gate. He's a bit dotty, but a good man nonetheless. Okay, Before thank you. The training zone, go see that wizard guy with his toothpicks. Be careful around him, though. Don't let him pitch you a line. Psychic, my ass. She winces in disgust. Okay, thank you. Well, this lady is more for the for the real big stuff. Uh, one question. A greeting without removing the pipe from her mouth. Mm. Just tell me what you want so we can dispense with all the how are yous and phony smiles you're lot so fond of. Straight to business. Yeah, okay. So, about the weapons. With interest. Don't you by any chance need to go to work? I'm just curious. She leans on the counter. Well, you know, I'm really interested in firearms, but I don't know much about them. Could you help, maybe help me out there? Is understanding. That'll come with time. I have manuals you can read, but they require authorization, too. I can only give out one per person. Well, I mean, that would help, of course. How about a guide on heavy weapons? Takachenko gives you a voluminous book about different kinds of heavy weapons. It's predominantly a service manual, but has some useful aiming and shooting advice as well. Thank you so much. Um, and could I have a look at your at your goods? So what what stuff do you have? That's the dracon. So we received a dracon. 
Drakonov's light machine gun had an outdated but reliable design after the discovery of the dome when it became necessary to have compact weapons combining high rate of fire and solid firepower. Vixen just cloned the Russian creation. It didn't take long time for them to think of a name, of course. Okay. <coughs> Judge Bad Nightstick. Cryo grenade, stun grenade, power cells, air gun powerlets. This is a Raven light pistol. Or like a light weapon, it's a pistol. One of the most popular civilian weapons widely produced by Westminster. Starting from 1974, the W207 Raven guns frame has been made from composite materials developed with dome technology. Okay, interesting. The Wasp medical dart gun manufactured by Wesley Industries purchased by Kronos. It shoots darts with various contents. In standard mode, it issues... It uses the technology of saturation of conventional ammunition with toxic materials. Oh, and that's quiet. Loudness quiet. This one is loudness moderate. Moderate. <coughs> <coughs> so, Judge Bad Nightstick. Some blacks affectionately call this weapon baby and you'd best stay away from that lot. This baton is covered with in hard rubber and has a solid rod inside with a sliding weight to make it strike harder. Oh, like uh, in the uh, in the group of clubs and rods, that sounds quite like high tech. That's a kraut, a dart gun. This one was is also a dart gun. Okay. Corporate cynicism of Silverwinger seeking to avoid an armed uprising under the dome at all costs led to the development of the Kraut. <clears throat> a pneumatic nail gun and the only legal means of self-defense for the staff of the Orange Wing. New Krauts are a rare find under the dome. If, you, if we happen to get our hands on one, it is likely used. The reason, brass knuckles, Cast brass knuckles manufactured by Seaman Inc. An unassuming last chance weapon popular with oranges and black wing guards alike. Okay, and then a salute taser. Attention. Attention. Taser ability is required for use. Salute taser, pinnacle of self defense technology. The voltage is tuned so as to neutralize the intruder without causing serious harm to their health. Unfortunately, the range does not exceed arm's length. That and a shock grenade. So this, uh, so we, yeah, so we can actually, we could be a total naive pacifist here. And we've got sleeping spray. It's unclear how the badge of soporific gas cans came under the dome, but it probably has something to do with the purchase of consumables for the Black Wing prior to the incident. According to rumors, this gas is actively used by the special service to capture living targets. Mm -hmm. Jalapeno pepper spray. A can of pepper spray is just the thing to stop any boor. The irritant gas exerts a strong local irritation, temporarily blinding the enemy, not particularly humane, but non-lethal. It even affects robots as it seeps into the cameras and condenses onto the lenses. Oh, yeah. And Adrom Andromeda, a laser pistol, high-tech weapon. Now it entered the market less than a year ago, thousands of Andromeda pistols have already been sold, earning themselves the titles of legendary and the first of its kind. This is no surprise. Andromeda is indeed the first energy pistol certified for mass production and the first weapon with removable cadmium batteries. As for the legendary tag, well, TV commercials advertise it around the clock, and if you can't trust TV, who can you trust, right? I just wonder why this has a, a loudness of moderate, because it doesn't make boom, right? Or maybe it makes pew 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 or something, yeah. Attention. Well, that's certainly all very interesting. In and damage, with uh, any pepper forward. spray or something, yeah, you always should point it uh, into the direction you want to shoot or you want to spray. Uh, yesterday I watched the movie uh, Cat Person. Not a very good one. Not a very good movie, but... Um, the psychopathic girl uh, in the movie, uh, she used pepper spray on herself and sprayed her own uh, her own eyes. So, but yeah, I mean, if you if you're interested, I'll tell about the movie uh, at another point. So here we go. That is Andri Mihai. 
And by the way, could we sneak in here? No, that is beyond our ability. Uh, sorry, we don't want to go there. So there. Hello, Andri. A lean silver with thick black hair and a huge cigar clamped in his teeth is sitting in front of you. As you approach, he flashes a sly grin and slowly raises an outstretched hand above the table. Something really weird happens. All the paper clips, pencils, scattered toothpicks, and bits of trash float up from the table and hang in the air. The silver badge reading Andre <clears throat> Mihai, science instructor, floats up as well. Hmm. Well, I th I guess the guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, if he does a trick like that, yeah. It's not super impressive, but I guess he's mightily proud on of it. So let's gape in astonishment at the objects hanging in midair. The silver trills with laughter. He approves of your reaction. Yeah, the there you go. Objects fall back to the tabletop with a light clatter. Yeah. <laughs> Here for the briefing, huh? Shall we get to it? He takes the cigar out of his mouth and exhales Attention. a lush Attention. cloud of smoke. <laughs> smoking, huh? We don't like passive smoking. Well, um, yeah, I'm ready for the Sarnax briefing. The silver props his elbows on the table. Anyway, here's the deal. It's more profitable for people with a high psyche to study psionics. Give me your hand. Not waiting for an answer, he grabs your hand with strong, dark fingers. Uh, okay, well then, yeah, hold my hand then. Andre gropes your hand with an expression of fierce concentration. So... Do you practice bells, bulbs, brushing mugs off the table, huh? Uh, I'm feeling slightly uncomfortable here, but... Uh... The silver takes a thin glove covered in talc from his desk and passes it to you. Look, a glove, right? But it isn't just a glove. This is an ooh, mama, hold me tight glove. It takes energy from your noggin, your psyche, and pew, concentrates it. My noggin? You know, you know, I'm I'm more into girls actually. It's not like that I'm very successful there or anything, but uh, yeah. He counts off on his fingers. Learn psionics. Put on the glove. Transform energy into the necessary shape. That's the whole briefing. Simple. Simple. Now to your questions, huh? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Then let's let's change the topic. I think that's a good idea. So, um, well. Could you tell me something about psionics and its origins? The silver takes a pull at his cigar and releases a self-important puff of smoke. Psionics. It's a gift for all of us. The forefathers took off someplace. Poof. Gone. Only the dome remains. And this. Psionics, huh? He rocks back in his armchair, puffing on his cigar. The toothpicks again slowly rise up from the table. Mihai spreads his dark hands. Toothpicks hover around his head in a kind of halo. Scientists say everyone has an organic skill called psyche. You have it, I have it, everyone has it, uh-huh. Big psyche, you got talents. Small psyche, no talents. You'll need to carry a lighter all your life. Okay. Well, could you could you sh uh, show me another trick? You don't have to ask him twice. Mihai picks up a light bulb from the table, gripping the base in his hand. The filament begins to glow faintly. Soon enough, it comes to full heat and glows bright orange. Uh huh. In a little over a second, the bulb is shining with a steady white light. Impressive. The silver laughs contentedly. Well, can you show me another it trick? It doesn't take the psychic long to think of something. A small two com bond coin jumps up from the table, and an invisible force folds it in half. Impressive. The ruined coin drops into a glass already almost full of coins in the same state. Ah, well, could be a costly hobby, though. Do you know any other tricks? Mihai spreads his hands good-naturedly as if to say, you're welcome. The toothpicks on the table skitter around for a moment, arranging themselves into a curse word. Oh, that is awkward. The silver laughs loudly at his joke. <laughs> a cigar falls from his mouth to float in the air. Ash flaking weightlessly from the tip. Impressive. 
Well, how about another trick? Andre jumps up from his armchair and thrusts his face close to yours, exhaling foul cigar smoke. Quickly, think of a number, huh? Uh, the unexpected question calls a bunch of different numbers to mind, but you can't seem to decide on one. Yeah, like uh, if you if you are able to consider so many possibilities, options, and opportunities within a split second with this brain of ours then it is sometimes hard to make a decision extremely quickly. Like, you know, in the second part of that split second. The silver looks into your eyes. Three, fourteen, thirteen, seventy-six. Oh. He easily names every number you've got in mind. Impressive. Do you know any other tricks? Mihai shakes his head wearily. No, enough tricks. I'm exhausted. Psionics is, it requires strength, drains you. Remember that, huh? Oh, that was all? Oh, well, okay then. Do you barter anything? Oh, you do have... Oh, yeah, this is... We got a Spectre Psychokinetic Psy Glove there. The most common model of Psy Glove equipped with an inertial psyche trap. The device receives signals coming from our brain and converts them into psychic impulses that inflict damage upon the enemy, okay? Damage 7 to 10. And this here, they are better. The torpedo electrokinetic sea glove. Scion DK. Ah, yeah, so these are the different uh, damage types. Charged particles with this torpedo. So I guess this is like pure energy or something. Cryokinetic. So this is like uh, freeze damage, cold damage, spectre psychokinetic. Um. Oh, that's the one that we have. Okay, and then this here, Heraclitus. Pyrokinetic. Okay, fire damage. All right, interesting. And he's got a lot of Energon. A stimulator that increases vigor and performance. It's based on Eleutherococcus combined with caffeine and fen uh, phenylethylamine. Read the directions before use and remember that Maximum cannot be held responsible for accidental death due to overdose. Oh, well. Okay. Okay, then. Well, then enough tricks. Thank you for showing me around. And oh, you have so, so power, uh, so beautiful plants over here. Let me have a look. Oh, yeah. Well, no, nothing in there though. And here. Beautiful plants, yeah, yeah. Very nice, very nice. And, uh, yeah, while well, we are talking, okay. You don't have anything in your locker. Okay, then, so. See you, thank you, have a nice day. I'm going now. Or not. <laughs> Let's sneak in. And there's a safe over here. Ah, yeah, ooh, and we can. We can open it. There you go. What is that? A relic dust. Okay, let's get out of here. Sneaking away. Closing the door. Damn, Very nice indeed. Oh. I'm surrounded by thieves. To the silvers about that idiot. They'll take the appropriate measures. I there you go, measures. huh? What the hell do they break locks for? There you go. Well, that was a thrill, right? Like a little ship lo a sh shoplifting girl, a rich girl. Except for the fact that we are actually kind of not, not rich. Okay, there's nothing here, so then, I oh, am. Yeah. Oh, it's a flimsy door. It's an Akron's door covered with rust and numerous dents. Apparently the lock often jammed, so it was necessary to apply force. Because of this, the door is rather loosened and grooves, and a couple of good kicks are enough to do away with it. The silvers about that idiot. They'll take the appropriate measures. I hate those orange. As you reach to open the sliding door, an engineer in a bright blue jacket stops you. Hold on there, chief. It's out of order. See? Okay. A newcomer, right? It's a straight up open house here today. He offers you his hand. According to his badge, this is Maxim Penkovsky, technician. The technician slaps the door with one hand. You have to wait until I'm done. Some orange jammed up the lock with chewing gum just for a laugh. They're like animals, those oranges. Marking their territory. If you ask me, they're too gracious about those bastards in Crystal Sands. 
Mm-hmm. Well, could you open the door? Penkovsky grunts angrily. <laughs> I wish I could. I'm gonna have to disassemble, clean, and reassemble it to get it working. It's work I don't need, and all thanks to some idiot. Oh, is that so? Maxime extracts a thin, sharp, precision probe from behind his ear and dangles it in front of you. Oh, what is that? There's another way. You want to learn something about picking locks? It's a useful skill in all sorts of situations. He looks at you expectantly. Oh, I don't know. Is that is that legal? Penkovsky shrugs. Pick this lock specifically as much as you like. But in general, yes, it can be illegal if you try to get in where you shouldn't be or open other people's lockers. No one will get upset if you touch an ownerless door. Okay, well, I have no idea whatsoever about picking locks, you see. But yeah, I mean, it seems to be a useful skill. So what what could you tell me about the it? Blues getting excited. All right, looky here. Penkovsky presses his pick lock and an odd device resembling a hybrid of a screwdriver and a can opener into your hand. Using a mechanical pick lock is easy peasy. No special skill required. They wear out after a few locks. While the old fashioned kind is another thing entirely. Cheap, one use. But one has to know how to use it right. That's a tool for a master. Maxine Intriguing. takes out another pick lock and crouches by the door. He gives you a quick lesson on how to pick a lock. By the way, you can carry your tools in your belt. It's much handier to have them right there. Penkovsky shows you his utility belt, where he keeps all kinds of tools and gadgets. Actually, finding tools under the dome is no problem at all. There are even devices for hacking terminals and so on. Maxime hoists up his belt. Interesting. Fascinating, the even. solemnly raises his index finger. And one more thing. Always use brand name stuff if you can. Groovy produces good kids. Modus and Supercolor do, too. They've all got fat contracts with Cronus, so they care about quality. Okay, that's good to know. Groovy, Modus and Supercolor, all right. Attention, attention. Please have he looks at the door again. Damn these locks. Though I'd rather be doing this than fixing hab pods. Those are a real pain in the ass. Why? What's wrong with the hab pods? Penkovsky gives you a patronizing look. Because they're poorly made, warped from the heat, and the filters aren't worth a damn. The modules were constructed by marketing managers, not engineers. Building a city in the desert was also their idea. This project is all about PR. Cronus wants to show the world how tough they are. Uh-huh, okay, interesting. So, do you sometimes exchange stuff with people? Oh yeah, you have... Ooh. That is costly. You have matches. Piece of cloth, okay. And we've got lots of these lockpicks, all right? That's good to know. Thank you. Well, picking a lock then, huh? I repeat, get a lockpick and attach it to your utility belt. Yeah, yeah. Then, we're we're um, just pretending to, to use door. a lockpick yes. and then we are just Apply. very quickly doing it just like this. You're doing great. All right, off you go. I'll keep working Thank on you. this lock because of that orange. Hey, oh. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you for the advice. Let's go in Welcome here. Welcome to the Dome, an amazing excursion to a world of new technology and the riddles of an ancient civilization. Listen to this information, useful for all wings, and receive a colorful leaflet. What is that? A contraption. A turret, an automated stationary, stationary firing device. Let's scan it. Welcome under the dome, an amazing excursion to a world of new technology and the riddles of... A Chimera MK1 turret, identified Kronos inventory, turret, stationary installation for automatic firing, equipped with machine guns, an infrared guidance system, real-time friend or foe analytic. Welcome under the dome, uh -huh, uh -huh. an amazing technology and the riddles of an ancient civilization. Listen to this information, useful for all wings. Are you just memorizing them? stuff by heart, dear? Oh, this young woman's polished badge reads Letizia Rivares. She's carrying a stack of glossy leaflets under her arm. We see another stack of leaflets on a nearby armchair. Okay. 
She pounces on us. Welcome to the dome. I have information useful for every scientist and researcher. That is interesting. Do you have anything interesting to trade? No? Okay. The silver smiles broadly. My name is Leticia Rivares. Give me five minutes of your precious time and I'll tell you about the remarkable career opportunities and breathtaking perspectives awaiting you under the dome. Don't turn me down. This is important. Um, well, yeah. Okay, I'm listening. Rivares beams. Great, take a seat, please, and I'll tell you how Kronos will change your life. Leticia tosses her free arm in the air with excitement. The dome marks the beginning of a new era in the history of civilization. You've chosen White Wing and your calling is to lead humanity to a better tomorrow. The entire infrastructure under the dome is tailored to scientists' needs. The Magellan Research Station, located to the north, is equipped with the latest scientific equipment and many other projects have special research facilities built just for them, like White Swan or the Kaleidoscope Project and many others where the best scientific minds of the world have, have assembled. While speaking, the silver points at something in the air as if displaying an invisible map. She looks at us again and produces a smile. Kronos believes that forefathers' technology will change the future. Therefore, it invests heavily in providing luxury living conditions for wide-wing employees, substantial wages, comfortable accommodations, free insurance, all to help you uncover the secrets of the dome as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We both stay silent for some time, watching one another. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kronos, thank you for joining us. Rivaris adds awkwardly. She looks at us expectantly. Well, you know, you know, dear, that your speech was good, you know, but uh, I know how to improve it. The inane smile never leaves Rivaris' face. Uh, I will be thankful for any feedback or remarks regarding my work. In written form, of course. You want to leave feedback, don't you? No, not really. But I'd like to explain what's wrong with the speech. We explain in a few words that a person who's just arrived under the dome might feel a bit lost and that a promotional text needs to be presented in such a way that it jibes with the listener's expectations. Once she's targeted those expectations, she could create the need for a solution and only then propose that solution to the listener. Rivares listens avidly as we talk. I'm a bit lost. Expectation solutions, I suppose I get the gist. She finally seems to get a stroke of insight. She nods confidently and belligerently. Yes, yes, in exactly. They don't know how to solve their problem while I do, so that's what my speech should be about. Thank you. Yeah. Who's the best employee? You're the best employee, right? And we, are le we want to leave? Leticia blocks our way. Wait, are you leaving already? It just occurred to me. Uh, yes. The girl offers us a colorful booklet. If you were honestly interested in the speech, maybe you'd like to look through the leaflet? The dome as your new home, an exciting read for the entire family? Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, give me one leaflet. We take a glossy leaflet with a colorful picture on the cover, white and pink houses, palm trees and luxurious cars. We can't actually find all these things under the dome, though the picture is beautiful. The instant the leaflet is in our hand, Rivera offers us a couple more. How about a few more for your friends? No? Well, all right. Okay, yeah, we'll have a nice I day then. So, no, that was fun. Um, so to speak of role playing now, guys. So uh, the uh, if uh, you can see hey, in, in the, under the dome? you feeling lost and scared, lost and scared. Forefathers in the IRS. You need something but don't know exactly what it is. Contact us. We're Silverwing. We know what you need better than you do. Yes, we know all about your needs because we're the ones who formed them. And now I'm offering you a solution. Hey, first day under the dome. Okay, well, I, I guess we were rather successful there. At least she's very motivated now. So the fun thing is, let me tell you while sitting here, um, the fun thing is that uh, there are different options here and you can see in the additional, the bonus uh, episode uh, that I did with the, with the tech, the perceptive tech. There I just pushed her away and then it's very sad, but she starts crying. <laughs> And I personally, I like that very much. Yeah. 
It's like a really funny thing. Uh, like a funny, uh, a funny um, way to deal with this, but also it's sad and I like the feedback that you get. I'm just going here, so I'm not being interrupted with, with her talking. Um, so it's nice, a nice feedback for people who behave badly and uh, I think that's actually pretty nice game design. Um, and it's also possible, I'm not sure, but uh, sh she just said, okay, take another leaflet and uh, with another character, I think, maybe, um, I'm not entirely certain, maybe with the orange or something, uh, you can you can take a, a lot of leaflets, like like four or five or something, and of course you can sell them yeah, for, well, a negligible amount of money, but the idea is very funny. So this girl here or this lady uh, doesn't have much to do and just repeats the stuff. That's also why why she knows that uh, her career is maybe at a stop over there, handing people leaflets and telling her crap. Yeah. So that's actually pretty pretty funny. So let's have a look here. What's that? A holographic table. Oh goodness, this is a unique holographic interactive map of the dome. Real miracle of technology. Okay, let's have a look at it. This is desk is a bit different from the others on this floor. It's covered with a thick layer of cellular glass treated with luminophore. Every little point of the surface emits a weak yellow light, some of them growing bl brighter, some dimmer. Oh. The worktop has a huge built-in digital display, rows of glowing points from a detailed map of the area under the dome. We touch the screen with our fingertips and the static makes the hairs on our arm rise. Ooh. Well, let's look at the north. The image spawn, uh, pawns down and zooms in slightly to display the northern territories. This is the most developed part of the dome. Three highways lead from Concord to Magellan Station, the observation deck and the city. Mm -hmm. The D11 Bremen, C13 Cincinnati and C12 Nashville objects are also located here. So I guess this is uh, this is Concord, and then Mar Magellan Station. To Magellan Station, the observation deck, and the city. Maybe this is the observation deck, and the city, or maybe this is the city or whatever. But here, there are three things, D11, Bremen, Cincinnati, and Nashville. So I guess this here, this here, and this here might be something. Well, would be great to to know better. But yeah, let's turn the audio guide on. Speakers hidden within the table come to life. In the north are the first autonomous li living and research bunkers under the dome. And in a couple of years, you'll find a real city in this location. Or oh, the city with the capital C. This will be the ultra-modern ultra light of civilization, a utopia to which every city on Earth will aspire. Okay, well, let's look to the south. The desert to the south is colored a bright brick red. Something huge and shapeless, resembling a poorly drawn star, casts its disjointed rays across the sand. Nearby, the site designation 010 Ankara glows blurrily white. Let's turn the audio guide on. Turn our attention to our vast research. Turn our uh, turn your attention to our vast research facilities and institutes. The south of the dome is the scientific industrial center. Here is where we forge our future together. Sounds from the invisible speakers. Mm -hmm. And then the west. We stop the display over the pale lands of the west, which consists of uh, mostly of w milky white patches of salt marsh. Marsh. The west of the dome is amazingly empty. Mm -hmm. Turning the audio guide on. Small ripples cascade across the table surface. The audio guide is on. In the west of the dome, you'll find our sprawling recreation areas, bars, bars, massage parlors, casinos, and romantic resorts are already available and waiting for every employee. 
Okay, that's good to know. The E, the West. And what's in the East? We gently pull the tight fader slider to the right. The East, uh, the Eastern section of the dome has several unfinished facilities and abandoned buildings. Mm -hmm. Paved roads are almost absent, all but a lonely fractured highway dusted with sand. Maybe this one here. Hmm. Audio guide. A loud voice like a salesman blares out. The eastern part of the dome is the business center. This is where the action is. Literally, look at the grids of glistening rooftops at the construction machines scurrying about, digging trenches and building roads. This is the project of the century. Okay, and the central part, we have a bird's eye view of Concord Station. The main structure built into the rock is a harsh white against the backdrop of yellowish sand. Mm -hmm. Audio guide. This is Concord, the first and still most important complex under the dome. This station is the artery for all communications with the outside world, as well as the hub where all supplies, equipment and new employees arrive in the dome. It would be a shame if something happened to Concord, wouldn't it? <laughs> the audio guide laughs fervently. Okay, let's step away. Mm -hmm. All right. And there's another person here. Norman Potter. Hello, Norman. The stubby black's face brightens upon our arrival. Norman Potter is written on his badge. There's a plastic peace sign next to the badge in violation of regulations. Oh, it's the 70s, right? Hello. Hello, brother. Did you know that two of out of seven Kronos employees die violently? We House of Kindness activists want to change that. He gives us his hand. He's sporting a couple of friendship bracelets. He slaps at his pockets. Alas, I don't have any more leaflets, but don't worry. I'll tell you about non-lethal weapons and how to defeat an opponent without killing them. Uh, what, what is that House of Kindness? This is our commune. We practice meditation, walk on colds, don't eat meat, and are trying to give up plastic. He explains to us proudly. Uh, how is a hippie serving in Blackwing, I wonder? It's my mission. I chose Blackwing to prove by example that military service without violence is possible. He proclaims theatrically his hand on his peace sign. Oh, isn't that sweet and cute, right? Well... How about you tell me something about non-lethal weapons, then? Very good, this will change your life, he smiles. When you arrive under the dome, you are issued weapons, but they never explain that almost any kind of weapon can use non-lethal ammunition or attack methods. Non-lethal ammunition causes severe fatigue after several attacks. The enemy may be knocked unconscious, Norman explains passionately. We notice... After several attacks, and the enemy may be knocked unconscious, uh, but yeah. Non-lethal weapons include tasers, pepper spray, and tranquilizer darts can also be acquired under the dome. And there are martial arts techniques that only take the enemy out of action without killing. Remember the main thing, if you want to win without killing, you have to exhaust your opponent. The black finishes expressively. Okay. Well, do you... Do you barter anything now? You only have a little piece of cloth on you. Okay. Well then, yeah, I'll consider that. The mission might call for something like that, for non-lethal met method. However, I'm into the really big guns, you know. You know the really big guns. Okay, so... There's something here, the vacuum cleaner. Okay, well, what is it? The Starboy W3, the model type is indicated on its body. Oh, yeah, well, we can't do anything. So here, janitor's gear. Yeah. Well, we, we, we are considering if we are actually a kleptomaniac. Oh, what's that? What an inhospitable wilderness, you'll say. And I fully agree with you. But what if I told you that in a year... You'll be lying by a swimming pool, sipping a margarita right on this spot. Sounds like a sci-fi story. But we aren't strangers to sci-fi here. The detailed plans are ready. And according to them, there will soon be a real resort city in the West. With bars, casinos, spas, 
and therapeutic saunas. I don't know about you, but I'm sure I'll come here in a year and will feel like a real queen. This is Victoria Legrand and the dome from the inside. See you next time. Mm -hmm. Well, what we notice is that that they that they talk about their plans, right? Contact us. They have plans of doing some stuff, but uh, it's uh, these are all still plans, right? Okay, so then here. Hello, Winston Botherby. Fighting spirit. Yeah, he looks strong, like a soldier. Black wing. A middle-aged black is sitting behind the counter with his hands in his lap. The buttons and zippers on his uniform are polished to a shine. And even his badge, Winston Botherby, instructor, has been buffed so much it hurts to look at it. Oh, that's shiny. Botherby frowns as you approach. Your first act is being late for the briefing. Are you going to be late for your funeral as well? No, sir. We snap to attention and report the yeah. I report that I'm here for your assignment and want to receive instruction. Also, do you barter anything? Oh yeah, you do have some stuff. The black looks you over. Yes, I see the weapon received check mark. Looks like you are fully prepared to disappoint me. You are prepared, right, employee? Uh, sir, you are a bit negative there, but. I'm re I'm prepared. Father B leans over the counter and directs you to the doors. Behind this door is a combat simulation computer. Launch it and begin your course. He raises his index finger. The conditions in the training zone closely simulate those one would experience in the field. Your goal is to avoid getting lost and dying of dehydration. And try to aim the barrel away from yourself when shooting. Pulling a notepad from his pocket, the instructor jots down your name. Your goal is to hit three targets. I'm going to monitor you and advise as necessary. And try not to burst into tears. That's all. Go ahead. Oh, okay, well, he's he's amicable, huh? We are, we are saluting him in an awkward way and then we leave. And we are also shouting, Sir, yes, sir! Okay, so and now that he's away from there, we notice something. Um, with me, Victoria Legrand. As you can see, there are endless salt There are people the here. Region behind me. The sun like, what about you guys? And the air is as dry as a Bertha. What an inhospitable she actually looks pleasant. And I fully agree Broad smile, and there is Thorsten Dahl, a, 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 an orange, orange guy, who is he? Who looks like he's used to a lot of uh, physical uh, could we actually switch this off no we can't uh, he looks like he's actually uh, accustomed to labor to physical labor oh i don't know about you but i'm sure i'll come here in a year okay then so let's talk with these guys also to piss off this uh, soldier guy so he has to wait a little bit. This young, dark-haired female guard's face bears a canny and slightly self-absorbed expression. The silver badge on the black winger's chest says Bertha Hartmann, guard. Or it's rather Bertha Hartmann, right? Guard. Hello, hello, listen. Could you do me a favor? Well, what do, what, what do you need? Keep an eye on Torsten for a couple minutes. I've got to take care of something. Please, she draws a childish tone. She draws in a childish tone, hands clasped as if in prayer. Well, of course, of course, we c I can help you. Thank you, thank you, honey. I'll be right back. She tenderly dusts the speck off our uh, off our jumpsuit and leaves, waving her hand playfully. Oh, is she is she flirting with us? I think she was just manipulating us. Okay. And now that she is out of the way, let's go there. Yeah, no one's watching. The guy is working over there. 
There's something here. Check that one out. Oh, yeah. It's broken. Oh, what is what happened? We have already we already have a mild fatigue. So things are really exhausting over here, huh? It's broken. Okay, but we can open it right now. Okay. Dark Secrets beer. Dark Secrets stout in a bottle branded with the Kronos logo. Released to commemorate the foundation's fifth fifth anniversary. Okay. Well. So let's go in here. That is a computer terminal. Reliable, cheap and vandal resistant. Our go-to device where network access is urgently required. Oh yeah, and we should prepare, right? So we have this stuff. The machine gun. Actually, I feel that we shouldn't shoot our own machine gun. The dome has your no home leaflet. That's actually... That's the one we already got, okay. Well, we could try out a number of weapons, but it depends, so... But I think, I feel that we are prepared, yeah. There. Using the terminal. The following text glows from a small amber-colored screen. Welcome to the Sherman Holographic Combat Emulation System. Please select the program. Well, yeah, and we are entering Alpha to initiate the Alpha Squad hologram. Don't have any more options there. The picture slowly changes. Looking closely, we can see the lines being rewritten one by one. Sherman system, Alpha Squad enters the battle. Yeah, let's proceed to the training zone. Ah, and it is a turn-based tactical combat, right? So, what can we do here? We have our Dracon can do single shots, burst shots, long bursts, a tracer, it's a machine gun ability, gives evasion minus 20, doesn't deal damage, but it costs 2 AP. We only have 7 AP, and the thing is, um, thing is are we carrying too much already oh because guts is reduced because we are already fatigued huh? so the thing is we can yeah here we have action points at the beginning of the turn and we can save we can save AP because we are so intelligent we can save a lot of uh, action points um, for the next turn. Yeah. So, single shot. Precision modifier. Minus 20. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. And we can get into a kneeling position. Which gives us 30% more precision. So, if we want to shoot this guy, we have 44%. And if we use the single shot... Oh, yeah, it's 44. Okay. Um, let's get into the kneeling position. Like this. I wish we would actually kneel down there, but yeah. Can't have everything. There you go. 74% now. Okay, let's shoot this guy. Oh, come on. Okay, well. That is just the luck of the hardball. But yeah, let's skip that one. Okay, this guy, oh yeah, the, the hologram is coming. Oh yeah, hologram. Oh, shot us. Did it hit us? Yes, it did. Environment in combat, almost every battle we are surrounded by interactive objects. Yeah. We can also shoot the barrel, huh? 
This red barrel looks vaguely familiar. It will probably explode from a couple of shots. Okay, well then let's have a single shot. Let's shoot at the... Oh yeah, there. Should have shot that one. There we go. That's how we can do it. Okay. There's an emitter. I guess this is the holographic emitter here, huh? Yeah. Okay. But uh, I think we shouldn't waste too much ammunition. So let's go here. We have our our carpentry hammer. Let's try that. Saving the AP. The holo the hologram uh, punched us in the face. This is a blow. And we have 59% to hit the hologram. There you go. Have another one. And we are waiting on this one. Comes with some form of melee weapon. Ay ay ay. Yeah. Being bit up. By a hologram, so let's punch him. Oh, we we missed. Can't. Oh, the holograph is beating us up. Okay, well. And there. Okay, there we go. Ah. Bother be nods grandly. You made it through training without making a total fool of yourself. Congratulations. I'll send a report up the chain about your completely unanticipated success. You're dismissed, employee. You are very unkind, sir. Maybe it's because you don't have much stuff on you, huh? Pistol bullet. Is it cheaper? Like how much is it actually? One per piece and one of these costs five. Oh yeah, okay. So actually, and these ones. Eh. So that doesn't really work well. That's better at Atom RPG. Way better. Okay, so this costs like one of them costs two. So that's three and then we need some, I guess, some black powder or something. So actually it's not really, it's not really a bargain. Just for five and then already these two cost three. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, well then. Thank you. Alright. So there we go. Well, and I think, looking at the time, I think we can end this episode here. Well, I think we made some very nice progress. We, well, we had a good pep talk with her. Um, with this lady. And I actually, I think we need to, we need to, uh, you need Look into these uh, machines over there. At least this one, maybe. We know what you need I guess we will. We will not be yes, able to do both. She's walking and around like this solution. and then coming Listen back. Hey, first day under the dome. You feeling lost and scared? Worried about ravenous forefathers in the IRS? You need something but don't know exactly what it is. So her, her walk us. pattern. We're Silverwing. We know what you need better than you do. Yes, we know all about your needs because we're the ones who formed them. And now I'm offering you a solution. Listen to my brief educational lesson. When she's first here, the then dome, she 
Oh yeah, that's actually a rather complicated walk pattern. And then she's coming back directly, okay. Ah yeah, so the second time she's turning around. And then she comes directly here. So actually, well, we could do this one quickly and then run away. But I think there's only a chance to do one of them. Don't worry. Because she will, she will notice, she will notice one of them very quickly. She walks. Yeah, I think there's only uh, only time to look into one machine, and then she will stand there. We know all about your needs because um, they're the ones who formed hey, yeah. first day under the dome. That will be thrilling, though. So, and we did shoot our our weapon. Yeah, not very efficiently, probably. But yeah, that's that's just how it is. And what I like is that we can put the weapon up and down. The problem I see with this here is that uh, we we know it from the uh, from the other um, from the other look uh, let's look videos, of course. And I I played around. So the problem with the psyche is that it really uh, increases your fatigue significantly. And just by lock picking around a bit, uh, the fatigue is already at 434, as we can see here. And uh, we can also, we can't wait here, right? Oh, we can wait. Ah, interesting, okay. Didn't gain any experience. Okay, interesting. It sounds like a sci fi story. But we aren't strangers to sci-fi here. Okay, the interesting. Um, because usually it's said that uh, there's danger nearby. Okay. Okay, interesting. So anyway, so I hope you uh, enjoyed this one. I li I really start to like the game a lot. Um, so and then I mean I know the tutorial already. I played it uh, with like also although I did a speed run with. Uh, most wings um i played it already like comp like uh, seriously i played it with the silver wing and we played it basically seriously with our mentally uh, challenged orange wing um and otherwise i did the speed runs with uh, every other color yeah and um it is it is a nice uh, introduction to all the game mechanics or most of them and i d i think they made a nice job here yeah, I mean, it's not perfect. I, I criticized a little bit already. Um, but I see a lot of potential here and I think this game is really cool. And I, I'm starting to really like it. So this, this let's play. I mean, it will be a complete playthrough, but as I said before, um, I'm just going to play a couple of episodes into it. Also, basically to save my character now that I got into the character creation and stuff. Uh, so, I am go. That's my plan at least. I'm going to play this whole tutorial and then the first area after that, um, because there's also a rather nice cliffhanger waiting there. Um, and after that, there will be a break now, and um, I will need to finish up some other games first. But I mean, do tell what you think. Um, I could also shift the priorities around of course um, if you feel that this one here is worthy or more worthy of our attention and time and well it is certainly worthy of attention and time I think yeah looks pretty good although the game only received like uh, average to slightly above average uh, uh, evaluations and reviews um, so far I really like it I think there's a lot of potential. They had a lot of nice ideas. I also like this thing that we have to manage stuff like like the the hunger and thirst, so these survival elements. Yeah, uh, that makes it certainly more interesting, especially in the long term. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of funny stuff going on. And in addition, we have our own little background story. Yeah, being this uh, child prodigy very very smart but otherwise yeah maybe maybe also not really a can we actually change that oh no it was only capital letters there we can't can we change the ca the name again oh no now i'll be every time i'll i'll see this i'll be irritated here 
by the second letter, but well, whatever. So let, I'm not looking there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, so we are not a total nerd, which is kind of sad because there is actually a pretty cool uh, perk here. Let's have a look at it. There, the nerd. Plus 45 tech and science, but for that we can only have a muscle of of at least uh, out of uh, two max, which is kind of sad for us. But yeah, we are we are not getting that one, but we are going to get um, a lot of uh, points anyway. Yeah, so because the first thing we will get is the Renaissance person, and then we have six everywhere or plus one everywhere. I'm not entirely certain if we actually get. Another point in brains, possibly. Then we have brain 16. That will be amazing. Um, and then later on, I showed you already, we'll get this other one to increase all our lowest numbers, the, which will be all of them. That's that's the idea behind this character build here. But otherwise, um, it is imperative that on the sixth level... We are actually taking Observant then, when we have Perception 6, because that gives us three skill points per level. Three more skill points. Yeah. I would have preferred to take this one, like, directly on the third level. Um, but we can't, because we don't have the Perception, of course. Right? And... Doing a totally... Um, average character basically yeah i mean we have one two three four five six seven eight ability uh, attributes uh, so it wouldn't have been possible to put everything at six for example right which is very sad so i think this this has a huge uh long-term potential yeah and we feel the potential inside of us we were just uh kind of held back at the same time with our brains maybe because yeah the ladies are not interested in very smart guys unless they have a lot of money that's what we believe at least at this point yeah and yeah maybe we are also just not charming enough but whatever so let's continue next time um we will continue on there with this gentleman sebastian van olden number five over there but we will also have a conversation here with Thorsten and then the returning guard. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, please do share your thoughts on the game or anything. Um, if you have any tips and tricks, please share them too. Because as you remember, um, the game, the walkthrough here or the Let's Play is also meant as a place, uh, as a walkthrough uh, where we can share tips and tricks. Yeah, for your own games. Um, basically as, as a, a archive, as an archive uh, and as a reference. So, uh, that being said, again, thanks for watching and I would, I would appreciate if you click the like button and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet so you never ever miss an episode again. So next time, bye-bye.